The following program is the work of broadcast students from the British Columbia Institute of Technology. BCIT Magazine features news stories from around the Lower Mainland which were produced over the past week. Responsibility for the content of the show rests completely with the students and their instructors. Today on BCIT Magazine, a new bylaw targets bullies in Port Coquitlam. New fair gates make life more difficult for one Burnaby resident. And the SPCA halves the fees to adopt a cat. Welcome to BCIT Magazine. I'm Carly Babcock. And I'm Jordan Liang. The city of Port Coquitlam has a new bylaw that cracks down on bullying. As Sana Rangwala reports, it's the first anti-bullying law that penalizes adults. When I saw that last slide on that YouTube of Amanda, and it said, I have nobody, I need someone, I thought, I'm someone. It's called Be Someone, and it's a program led by the city and its business leaders. All of you behind here, part of our community, part of the initiative to end bullying in our community and our country, and if you don't raise your signs, because also they've accepted that they are someone as well, and we want to make a difference in this insidious bullying and cyberbullying. Community members, including the mayor of Port Coquitlam and the mother of the late Amanda Todd, Carol Todd, announced the launch of this program. With Amanda's death, it has triggered so much, right? It, ju it just, it turned on the world and it made them stand up and listen. Amanda Todd took her life this October after being a victim of cyberbullying. With this program, anyone proven to have been bullying can expect a fine between $100 and $2,000. This includes online bullying. When most of us went to school and we got bullied, we could come home at 3 o'clock and close our doors, bullying over for the day. Now with social media and texting and the platforms that are out there, you can't get away. The Port Coquitlam bylaw is based on an existing one in Regina, but with this bylaw, people over the age of 18 can also get ticketed. If that person decides that they don't want to pay the ticket, they have the option to take a course to learn about the effects of bullying, and if they successfully complete that course, we'll rip up the ticket. The program will also be visible through window decals placed in businesses and public places. It's to let kids know participating community members are a safe choice for anyone being bullied. The program will be implemented starting December 9th. Sana Rangwala in Port Coquitlam for BCIT Magazine. The new fare gates at SkyTrain stations are meant to increase security and reduce fare evaders. But one Burnaby man with mobility constraints is concerned the new system will make it harder to run daily errands. Sunnering Walla reports. Burnaby resident Jason Poltz moved to the Lougheed area so he could be close to amenities. I moved into Burnaby about three years ago and one of the main reasons was is just the, the location, the convenience, uh, the distance to the Lougheed Mall so I could do uh, my grocery shopping and stuff like that. A big part of that convenience is a shortcut he takes through a fair paid zone at the Lougheed Skytrain station. Right now he goes from one entrance of the station to another which leads to the mall. But with the new fare gates that will be in place next year, Pult's worries TransLink will enforce fare paid zones more strictly and he won't be able to use his shortcut. I suffer from a few conditions health-wise and it's sort of hard for me to get around and I use the, the station almost every day. TransLink's solution to this issue is not charging people for using their shortcut but they're still going to have to pay some money. For people who are just cutting through, you will need a compass card. Uh, but we do and have built in different measures in order to help these people out. Uh, we do have a 21-minute buffer zone for people to tap on and off as they go through the station. Uh, I'm not very happy with that just because uh, I'd like to avoid the compass card. In fact, I don't really use the transit services because of my health condition, so I don't really need to buy a card. For some people, there will be an inconvenience there. Um, but we have put measures in place in order to make this as accessible as possible for everybody. According to Pultz, the alternate option is a significant inconvenience. 
So the, the, the amount I'll have to walk will be, uh, you know, probably four times the amount. Uh, you have to sort of go up Austin as kind of a hill and all the way around instead of directly just through the station. Those that use the shortcut right now would come out of here and go up this pathway and then go to the mall. But TransLink says if they want to continue using this shortcut, they're going to have to buy a compass card. The cost of the compass card for now is unknown. Sana Rangwala in Burnaby for BCIT Magazine. Reporter Sana Rangwala joins us now with more on this story. Sana, how exactly does this 21-minute buffer on the compass card work? Carly, the way it works is that people have 21 minutes to tap on and off at the same station. If they do it within that allotted time, they won't be charged. So in the case of people who want to use the shortcut, what they're going to have to do is they're going to have to buy a compass card first of all, and then tap on and off within the 21 minutes. So in the case of Jason Poltz, he'll have to do just that for, to be able to go do his groceries. Back to you. The ongoing dispute between BCGEU members has led to three job actions at BCIT campuses across the Lower Mainland, leaving many students frustrated. Duncan Halliday has the story. Wednesday saw the third job action by staff at BCIT in as many weeks. Faced with the possibility of more cancelled classes, students are frustrated. Right now I don't support them because it's interfering with us. Like We pay so much money to be here and we should be able to like, have our classes. It's kind of affecting my education too, so in that regard I don't support it. I feel like the strike could be probably done in a more effective manner, like if everybody's striked together and actually um, created a movement about it rather than just, you know, day by day, take it as it comes. Student Affairs Vice President Marwin Marwin says the Student Association sympathizes with the teacher's position. We, we, do, we do hear um, quite a bit from students and uh, because the institute, because BCIT is also concerned about this and they do want to support their instructors, um, they've actually advised us to uh, forward the student concerns uh, and the students themselves to BCIT. Although the dispute has been confined to a few one-day strikes, many students are saying if they have to miss a significant amount of class time, they'd want part of their tuition back. And we pay the same amount in tuition, but we're losing a week or two in some cases of content. So in a sense, we're paying full price for an education that's being cut down. I'm paying for a service. I've paid my tuition around $2,700 a semester, and uh, the service can't be provided for certain days. Why should I get a refund? We're paying to come here. I know the teachers, yeah, they haven't had a price increase for a while, but we're paying to, get, to come here and learn from them, not to have our classes canceled all the time. Marwin says the Student Association has heard as much from many students. If we're paying so many dollars uh, for the courses, uh, for hours, for the credits, then there has to be some type of accountability for that. For now, though, that's just hypothetical. But faculty and staff are set to walk off the job again on Monday. Duncan Halliday in Burnaby for BCIT Magazine. Coming up next on BCIT Magazine, find out why the SPCA is lowering adoption fees for cats. And a UBC student creates a new way for girls to participate in Movember. This is me. And my mom and dad. And my big brother, Alex and Jack. This is the day I learned that sandals got their name from sand. That jellyfish aren't made of jelly. That stars don't just come from the sky. That the ocean is bigger than all of us. This is the day we all got to forget I was sick. This was my wish. Oh hey there, fancy meeting you here. I'm Jeff Clowers and this is your BCIT community calendar.
Canyon Lights at the Capilano Suspension Bridge are a must-see event as guests will see thousands of twinkling lights stretching across the bridge and throughout the forest. Backed by popular demand are the children's scavenger hunt, glass blowing, and Christmas carol sing-along. Activities begin at 4 p.m. daily beginning December 1st. Not every little girl gets a pony for Christmas, but on December 2nd, come on down and join the Burnaby Horsemen's Association at the Burnaby Equestrian Centre for pony rides and horse demonstrations. The event is free to families, however, non-perishable food items will be accepted and donated to the Burnaby Food Bank. There will be 25 booths for various games and activities, all ran by Burnaby High Schoolers at the Vancouver Urban Ministries Christmas Fair on December 1st. The All Ages event will also feature a silent auction for a signed Michael Bublé prize with proceeds going towards the ministry's after school programs for children with learning disabilities. That's your community calendar, I'm Jeff Clowers. As fall turns to winter, lower mainland animal shelters are overflowing with abandoned animals. The Vancouver SPCA has come up with a couple of new strategies to cope with the issue. Our reporter Duncan Halliday has the story. This cat and thousands of others like it are looking for a home. To cope with all the abandoned animals, the SPCA has halved the adoption fee for cats, which normally ranges from $75 to $175. So we wanted to have a promotion where if people had really thought through the decision that they want to get a cat or a kitten, that would just be that added little extra incentive that they would come down and adopt so that we can get these cats into great homes, but also it frees up space to take in even more cats that are coming in. Manager Lori Chordick says the province is overpopulated with cats, and that means that many of them end up here. The SPCA has also expanded the sizes of the cats' cages, and although this has reduced cage space, Chordick says that the cats are happier, and as a result, they're being adopted quicker, which in the end means more space in the shelter. Yeah, what she did there. She's a calm kitten, a lovey kitten. Most people know that there is a, a promotion on. Most of the people, like when they come in, I say, are you here because of the promotion? And most of them say, yeah. Or have you heard of the promotion? Yes. So. Although it's only been a few days since the drive began, volunteers like Kathy say that it's working and more people who want to adopt cats are coming in. Um, just so many people coming in today and it was so gratifying to see people respond and come and offer these cats uh, great homes. With more and more cats pouring into shelters, if you're looking for a friend like this guy, now's the perfect time to head down to your local SPCA. Duncan Halliday in Vancouver for BCIT Magazine. With the holiday season fast approaching, many may be considering buying loved ones a pet. From now through December 9th, the SPCA is giving anyone looking for a cat or kitten 50% off all adoption fees. Joining us now is Ryan Votalainen, manager of the Burnaby SPCA branch. Ryan, thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Since the promotion started, have you seen an increase in cat adoptions? Definitely seen an increase. Um, I just got an email just before I showed up on studio here, and we've seen a significant increase in the adoptions we've done so far. Last year, the same time period from when we started the promotion till today, we adopted about 140 cats. This year, we're at 220. So. We've seen 80 extra cats throughout the province go into new homes as a result, so it's fantastic. And Ryan, what would you say the benefit of adopting a cat through the SPCA is as compared to buying a pet or buying a cat from a pet store? The benefit of getting from the SPCA is we make sure that all of their vaccines are up to date. We have some history usually on them, especially if they're adult cats. Um, and we're getting them out of the community and trying to rehome them as opposed to being uh, being bred. They're actually ones that are really needing the homes and needing to get into homes uh, quite quickly. So, And and what goes into the decision-making process to start a, a promotion like 50% off for adopting cats? Different things are, um, are considered. Uh, one of the things is the length of stay, and this is the one thing the SPC has been really concentrating on um, specifically this year, is the length that we're seeing our animals stay in our facilities. And we were finding that a lot of our cats were spending well over uh, two months in some of our facilities, which is way too long, and it ended up costing us more 
caring for them than it would be to reduce their adoption fee and trying to get them into permanent homes, which is really our ultimate goal, is to get them into a permanent home as opposed to being in a shelter environment. So although we try and do the best we can for them in the shelter, really a home is where they should be. Okay, and Ryan, lastly, where, uh, where can people go to find out more information about adopting? People can get all information about adopting through the SPCA on our website at spca.bc.ca. Uh, the address is on your screen. You click on the Adopt tab on top. It talks about the whole adoption process, um, our screening process, and you can also look at all the available animals that are for adoption online. Okay, thank you very much, Ryan. What started as a one-day event where people gathered pledges and shaved their heads in support of cancer patients has evolved into many events held in communities throughout BC. Hype Hair Studio and Disney on Ice are partnering together in the most recent Balding for Dollars campaign that aims to collect hair to be made into wigs for kids going through cancer treatment. Alyssa Bauer reports. She may be a shy seven-year-old, but Kirsten knows that actions speak louder than words. So whose idea was it to get your hair cut today? It was me. Yeah? We saw on the newspaper and then we were like, oh, I'm on the girl here. And I was like, if you want. She's participating in the BC Children's Hospital Foundation's Balding for Dollars campaign. For just eight inches of her hair, she'll get a free haircut and four tickets to Disney on Ice. But her mom Allison says it was the idea of helping other children that made her want to participate. Well, I think it's awesome that she really wants to help kids that don't have any hair and is willing to donate her own hair. I'm really proud of her and I think it's, you know, it's not easy to have a kid that's ill and it's uh, really nice that your own child wants to help those kids that are less fortunate than her. It takes six to ten ponytails to make just one wig, and only certain types of hair are suitable for donations. So it needs to be at least eight inches of clean, untreated hair. Gray is fine, so a child or an elderly person can donate. And then we put it in a ponytail, gently in a braid so it doesn't come loose. And then we just cut it off and send it away, and they process it from there. While all ages are encouraged to donate, it's estimated that children make up over 80% of the campaign's hair contributions. It's actually quite a bit of hair. <laughs> Maybe we've done more than I thought. Thank you. A lot of hair. Kirsten is leaving the salon with a new haircut, Disney on Ice tickets, and the feeling of knowing she helped another child in need. Alyssa Bauer in Vancouver for BCIT Magazine. Winter has returned to Robson Square. The plaza's lower levels have been transformed into an outdoor skating rink. Jordan Liang has more. Grade 5 students from L.C. Roy Elementary School break in the ice at the opening of the Robson Square ice rink. For many of the youngsters, this is the first time skating outdoors and they're loving it. What's your favorite part about the ice rink? Skating. Skating and getting exercise. I love skating. You're getting a lot of exercise, which is really fun. This is the fourth consecutive year the underground levels have transformed into a frozen pond, and the rink drew over 100,000 visitors last year. And uh, just a little footnote is I've been in the job for a little over 20 years, and I remember when this wasn't actually a nice rink, and really a disappointment that it wasn't being used. So the project stepping up and doing this for four years in a row has been uh, uh, very successful and uh, appreciated by our organization. The rink allows students in grades 4 through 7 to sign up for free skating lessons on school days, but the rink is also used by adults, including Martin, a 56-year-old that has been skating consistently over the last two years. No, actually I was off skates for eight years and I, uh, it wasn't a New Year's resolution, but I decided to just go up and get myself a pair of skates. And uh, last year I was here 37 times. And this is a, just a great facility, a great facility. And the best thing part of, it, part of it, of course they have skate and helmet rentals, but if you own your own skates, it is free. The Robson Square Ice Rink has nine events planned for this winter, including the 12 days of Christmas, a New Year's Eve celebration, and finishing off with a Valentine's Day ice dance on February 14th. Jordan Liang in Vancouver for BCIT Magazine.
Coming up next on BCIT Magazine, a UBC student creates a new way for girls to participate in November. The Vancouver Christmas Market has an impressive opening weekend. God, I just... They say if you want a wish to come true, never tell anyone. But there is one wish that can make the difference between life and death. And this wish can only come true if you tell someone. Please let your family know you want to be an organ donor. Standby graphics, ready camera one. If you want to experience the fast-paced world of news, today on BCIT Magazine, striking. Make magic on a movie set, frame, and action. Or bring your creative ideas to life. BCIT's hands-on training will get you started. BCIT television and video production. Your possibilities start here. Participating in Movember has taken off in popularity, but not everyone has the ability to grow a mustache. One UBC student has come up with a creative new way for women to show their Movember support. Connor Denoon reports. Rochelle Picardo wanted women to take part in this year's Movember campaign. But instead of getting women to grow a mustache, she's asking them to sign a pledge to not wear makeup all month. As a fourth-year UBC student, she's appealing to her fellow students to join the movement in the halls of her residence. She says the idea came from her own reliance on makeup. I realized that I forgot my makeup bag after a weekend at home, and I just totally freaked out. And um, I realized that makeup is kind of a crutch for me, and so um, I decided to try and run this event. Picardo stressed she had to learn how to use social media more effectively to spread her message and how easy it can be for people to start their own initiatives through the use of Facebook and Twitter. Through her own campaigning, she's been able to get dozens of supporters. About 40 are signed up, and there are about 50 attending the Facebook event, so uh, they might be doing the challenge but not officially signed up. It's going to prostate cancer because we are in conjunction with Movember and we don't want to compete with their event. This is just the women's chapter of Movember. Most of the, like, a lot of the positive reactions I've gotten have been from men. So uh, it's interesting because they also agree with my thinking that, you know, women don't need makeup to be beautiful. I just want other girls to think that too. Getting women to wash off their makeup is no easy feat, and Picardo says reactions from women have been mixed. Regardless, she's cleaned off her makeup for the month, and with 40 others doing so, she hopes to raise $1,000 for men's health. Connor Denoon in Vancouver for BCIT Magazine. The Roman Catholic Archdiocese of Vancouver has released an iPhone app designed to help the near half million BC Catholics get to Mass no matter where they are. Our Matthew Hunt reports. At parishes like the Holy Rosary Cathedral in downtown Vancouver, there's noticeably fewer young people who attend Mass. But now, thanks to progressive thinking, there's an app for that. The Archdiocese of Vancouver recently released this app to help Catholics get to Mass anywhere from down in White Rock to all the way up in Bella Coola. And it even shows specific times for Mass at each parish. And the whole idea being is to help the church reconnect with a new age of follower. The only person not too shy to talk about the app seemed to be the exact demographic it was made for. That's pretty neat. That's actually pretty helpful. And would you use it? Yeah, for sure. Because I always like switch from churches to churches, like to go to mass. I like seeing other churches, so it helps to know like the time and what parishes pass it. And Father Dion happily accepts any technology that helps anyone find their faith. Younger people have the facility to use these new technological uh, gadgets that the older folks are not so, so quick to pick up. The technology is always good to have as a, a way of evangelizing and letting people know that we're here and we're doing business and we're happy to have people come in and take part.
This is one of only three apps of its kind in North America, and the only one in Canada. But this is a clear sign that an age-old religion is taking very big steps into a modern world. Matthew Hunt, in Vancouver, for BCIT Magazine. Beginning this Friday, and for the first time ever in Burnaby and New Westminster, Operation Red Nose will be in effect. The volunteer-ran service provides people with a safe alternative to drinking and driving. And here at BCIT, some say it's a fantastic idea. I think it's a wonderful idea because it's very responsible. If people know that they've had too much to drink and feel uncomfortable, then um, there is an option. I think it's a really good idea. Uh, it'll minimize drunk driving and people will get home safer. Yeah, it's, why not? <laughs> Red Nose has been around since 1984 and has since been a popular ride home alternative in cities across the country. Police are asking for more volunteer drivers this winter. The third annual Vancouver Christmas Market had an impressive opening this weekend. Our Matthew Hunt took a tour to find out what visitors enjoy about the German-inspired market. The third annual Christmas market averaged about 10,000 customers on its opening weekend. Even on a Monday morning, people were lined up to be the first to enjoy all that this German-themed market has become best known for. In a time-honored tradition from the old country, German expats found the market a place to share their old home with their new neighbors. Yeah, we tried to bring a German tradition across. Um, it's um, 500 years old, so the first were started out in small villages in front of their churches. By now it has expanded to all the neighboring countries. And uh, yeah, now we even get some big uh, Christmas markets in North America. And in North America, few things scream Germany like the bratwurst. I think we are very popular because the last two days we had lineups of 20 meters every all day long. So I think it's uh, it's a good popularity. The atmosphere is energetic, fueled by shopping for unique gift ideas and finding flavors that only the holidays can justify. The sugar cones, and that was a massive sugar rush in one tiny little cone. <laughs> It's quite nice having a bit of a European theme to a Christmas fair. Usually it's, uh, it's quite rare over here. While most of the vendors are German, the Vancouver Christmas Market holds that it's open to all cultures and traditions. But from sausages to steins, there's an undeniably warm and inviting feel of Bavaria right here in downtown Vancouver. So if you're in need of Christmas cheer, this is definitely a place to find it. Matthew Hunt in Vancouver for BCIT Magazine. I'm Carly Babcock. And I'm Jordan Liang. And that's today's BCIT Magazine. Thanks for watching. We leave you now with, with a look at one of the adorable kittens up for adoption at the SPCA.